Girl, I'm sold. I like this show. It's cute. It's real cute. Now, yeah, yeah. That's why we're gonna get into it, but it's real cute. I like it. It's real people, and based on the day and age we we're in, there's always somebody sliding in somebody's DM. So we'll have lots of people, okay, for this show. And I feel like if we do it right. We won't have actors or want to be actors like on Ready to Love. So this is more authentic. It really is. And the drama so far feels <laughs> real good and salacious child. I am so here for it. Hey, y'all. Welcome and welcome back to my channel. My name is Belle. This is The Bell Perspective. And we are here to talk about the Never Ever Mets. This is season one, episode two. It's complicated IRL, aka in real life. If you're new to my channel, I talk about reality TV, books, all kinds of things. And yeah, support the channel. Get in the comments. Let me know what you think about the episode. Don't forget to like this video before you leave and check out my merch. Y'all shop La Belle V. I've got all kinds of things. The link is in the description box. Let's get into it, okay? So I wrote that I did watch episode one, but I'm not gonna go back and try to review that. But I did, I know what's going on, okay? So we picking up on the aftermath of Dominique and Alexis. Now, Dominique was already on some BS, y'all. He was already on some BS because he didn't think Alexis was attractive. And I was like, so why were you mentioning marriage? Why were you still, anyway? He was giving Kevin Gates, y'all. He looked like Kevin Gates to me, and I don't too much care for Kevin Gates. But anyway, so Dominique put his hands on Alexis, basically. And in my mind, I was like, Alexis, girl, you should already be packing your bags. And maybe this is just me being judgy. But honestly, once a man puts his hands on you, girl, what? Nothing else nobody else could say. Like, y'all, I'm wrapping up, baby. I'm finna pack my bag. I'm finna go. All right, so... Taronda sits down to meet with Alexis. Shout out to Taronda. I kept saying like, who is this girl? I seen her face before. I had to check out IMDb. She played Portia on Empire. I was like, Portia, Portia, girl, hey girl. She reminded me of somebody I used to know. She really liked the way she carried herself, the way she talked, the way she dressed. She reminded me of somebody I used to know. Anyway, also her birthday is a day before mine. Shout out to the Cancers, gang, gang. Anyway. So, Por so Portia, sorry, Taronda has a conversation with Alexis about, you know, what happened, what transpired the night before. Again, Dominique got up in Alexis' face because he was accusing her of flirting with Greg, who had on Hoochie Daddy shorts. And it just went too far. He put his hands on her, he shoved her, then got up in her face. Just, just craziness. It was just crazy. Anyway, so Taronda says that you know, you need to accept what you're worth and you're worth a whole lot, okay? And they play a video of what Dominique says to Alexis. Basically, it was just like this, you know, some bullshit. Girl, it was not, I was like, why did y'all even play this? Y'all shouldn't have even showed him. No, mm -mm. but I guess, I guess to give two sides of the story, I guess, okay? Anyway, at the end of the day, Taronda tells Alexis that they have a no touching policy. You keep your hands to yourself. And because of that, Dominique had to be sent home and Alexis, because he's going home, we sending you home too. And I thought that that was fair. It, you know, that was fair. That was right. A lot of the housemates based off of their confessionals, they thought the same thing. All right. The other side to this, as Taronda is asking her, you know, how do you feel? What are you going to do moving forward? Production asked her, I believe as well in the confessional. She says that I'm not, I'm not going to get back with Dominique. I'm not moving forward, but I do not believe her. Y'all do y'all believe that Alexis is done with Dominique? just get down in the comments if you believe her tell me what you think i don't believe her not for one second i just didn't it just didn't give me that dominique raggedy behind was in the confessional telling people that he doesn't regret the moment which i understood what he was saying when he said you know i'm still young i'm still learning i don't regret but i was like not keeping your hands to yourself is something you learn early on but actually let me take that back <laughs> I guess it ain't. Anyway, he also telling people, you know, I'm going to still be online, meeting women online. Call me. I said, girl, you'll be a goddamn fool. But also, I believe Alexis is still going to call. So anyway, we see Josh and Shay. They're the ones that have the most chemistry to me. When I tell you Josh and Shay done already got it in, girl, I said, I know y'all over there doing a grown up. Oh, y'all is already over there doing a grown up. And I'm not mad. Shay is getting her whole life. And I'm happy for her. We'll, we'll see. I got my good eye on everybody. So we don't know. But she's happy right now, okay? We see Chris and Sandia. Okay. <laughs> Chris remind me of somebody I used to know as well. <laughs> 
Oh, Chris remind me of somebody I used to know, child. I mean, he was finer than that, though. Chris ain't Chris ain't all that. Chris really is not all that. But anyway, we're moving on. So Chris with, with all the guys of the house, and he talking cash money, okay? He talking cash money. Oh, you know, me and Sandia not together. You know, she's not my girlfriend. I get girls. I don't have no problem getting no girls. You know, Chris gives me one of those type of dudes who you know, again, would follow Kevin Samuels, who would follow, you know, those kinds of men, you know, get women, don't trust them, don't give them your heart, they emotional, you know, they're the weaker link, they're the weaker, they're the weaker vessel, you need to dominate them, you know, all of that foolishness that they learn from, you know, those types of people, fresh and fit, Kevin Samuels, you know, all of them, all that type of stuff there. Okay. So Chris over there flexing with the guys and the guys are all like kind of eating it up. And I'm looking at them like, sir, are y'all not going to correct him or even say anything? Y'all just going to sit up here and let this man talk his cash money, but okay, whatever. Sandia happens to be in the kitchen overhearing what Chris said, word for word, bar for bar, right? Had it been me, I would have been packing my bags, but she told me something she finna fight for it. Three. I said, girl, you only knew this thing for three months and over the internet, girl, please. But okay, we <laughs> okay, girl. Okay, so she overheard that, right? And that was the the episode one. So now they get an opportunity to address it, right? So after the whole aftermath with Alexis, Alexis goes home. Everybody kind of was just sending her off. So all of that, now the dust is settling. Chris says he needs to go and tend to his woman. I said, Chris, I thought you said she wasn't your woman. I thought y'all, I thought you wasn't exclusive with her. What happened? Okay. Oh, you trying to smooth things over? Oh, all right. <laughs> oh okay i see so chris goes over to sandia they sitting outside on the patio and he played all the mind games and i said sandia i know you know what it is but you're not confident enough in yourself for whatever it is sandia give me very much she is a haitian girl born in haiti gives me very much um church girl doesn't have been very sheltered hasn't have a had a whole lot of life experience especially with these niggas girl okay all right and a nigga can be a, be a man or a woman anybody who ignorant white people black people whoever y'all can be some niggas period okay so you don't really have a whole lot of experience with these niggas okay and so she just gets very sheltered very little house on the prairie vibe and chris gives me he be running after bad bitches and not because he really liked them like that, like that, but that's what he feels like he deserves because he want arm candy, but he also don't trust them and he interchanges them like tokens. You know what I'm saying? That's what he gives me. So for him to go after a woman like Sandia, it makes me feel like he's one of those type of women that I fool with the freaks in the streets, but I want my wife to be like this real prim and proper type of woman who's super like, um, doesn't wear makeup, doesn't believe in all this other stuff, but I'm gonna cheat on her and creep on her with the with the bad bitches in the street. Like Derrick Jackson, like that type of <laughs> like that type of thing. Cause he feels like that's what women like he feels like there's like a, a, a strange dichotomy because he doesn't trust women like that. I can't explain it. I and Chris reminds me of somebody I used to know, y'all. I really oh I can't wait to, until I get the courage. Y'all, y'all, y'all lift me up in prayer. <laughs> okay. Cause I want to start giving story time. Cause baby, when I tell you I have some shit. Oh, but I, I just, girls, this is going to live on the internet forever. So I got to, I got to pace myself. But anyway, anyway, Chris remind me of somebody I used to know. So they wives always be that not, not homely. Cause, cause Cindy is beautiful, but you know, I don't wear a lot of makeup. I don't do a lot. You know, all the, you know, I, I dress, you know, like little house on the prairie. I can't explain it. Anyway, y'all know what I'm talking about. Get down in the comments. If you know what I mean. So Sandia is explaining to him that she didn't feel comfortable with what he said to the to the guys in the kitchen chris like no i ain't say nothing i didn't tell them that you know we don't that i didn't say nothing out of line you getting emotional he literally sitting in front of this lady and planning her face and manipulating the situation okay and sandia is just like i just don't want to look bad girl you don't want to look bad girl that's your that's your that's your biggest concern this nigga is playing he disrespected you to no end and you had an opportunity to see it and you really don't have any ties to him. But because you just trying to have a man and he he fits the bill in terms of success or whatever you feel, this image in your mind. So you still talking about quote unquote, you finna fight for it. Girl, if you don't get out of here, girl, get out of town. Cause just like you met Chris, you can meet somebody else. But anyway, Sandia, good luck with that girl. So they all get together for the tantric, not tantric. What is it? Not tantric, sorry. The Kama Sutra. And it's like a, a little game where they have to pick uh, 
intimate poses that they're in. Obviously, these are sexual positions. Nothing is actually happening in front of everybody. But these are very great at like helping you provide intimacy. You know, you're looking at each other in the eye. You seeing the windows of that person's soul. You like, ooh, and he like, ooh, and y'all like, ooh, you know? Anyway, okay, so... Teronda tells them about the game and they can choose a, a position to be in. And then you have to explain how you feel, how you feel while you're in that position. Teronda also tells them that they got a boom, boom room. Child Shay and Josh then already explored that boom, boom room. Now, how frequently is that boom, boom room being cleaned? Cause I ain't trying to go up in a room that ain't Clint. Okay. Is that room Clint? I don't know. Is it Clint up in here? Cause we ain't trying to roll up in no sheets that somebody else done rolled up in. That's nasty. That was my first thought. I was like, now how frequently are them people coming over there to clean that thing? Uh-uh. Anyway. And it's only one boom, boom, room. Okay. Mm. Anyway, we moving forward. So the couple that decides to go first is Chris and Sandia. Now, I thought, if, I thought it odd. I found it odd that one of the positions that would put the man in a vulnerable spot, Chris was like, ugh. Ugh. Right. Okay. Because you always want to feel like you in control, huh? Okay, and Sandia, because she's so damn little house on the prairie, you, you know, she only no missionary, baby. She only no miss girl. Uh, <laughs> I'm judging her, but I really do feel like Sandia real like sheltered or something. I don't know. Anyway, so the posi- the the position that required vulnerability from a man, Chris was like, hell no, hell no. Well, I dominate women. I do. I I get her on the back. I get her on her stuff. I I, I say, you know what? For me, but Chris wouldn't want to talk to nobody like me because I, you know, it, it just wouldn't work. Um, and I, I damn sure wouldn't want to talk to his ass neither. But I'm saying he would not want to. I would pick no nigga. You gonna be in a position of vulnerability, and I'm the one that's taking the domin uh, that's dominating because it's it's a balance. It's a balancing act. It can't always be one person all the time. Anyway, that's. Y'all get down in the comments, tell me what y'all think. Anyway, we moving on. So Chris talks about how he feels. He says Sandy is a nice girl. You know, I feel like all of this was performative with Chris and Sandy. I really do. I feel like Chris knows how to perform to make women, quote unquote, be comfortable, but it's not real because he already blurted out and told us that he doesn't trust women. And I, we don't know how far that goes. We don't know how deep that goes and how how ingrained it has become in his everyday way of thinking, you know? So I have concerns. That is a very huge red flag for me. Shay and Joshua, they doing, what is it, the flower petal? I think it was. I did not get the names of those um, positions, but girl, <laughs> I need the book. Okay, anyway, so they talking about, oh, we did this already. Oh, we did that one already yesterday. So I said, okay, oh, y'all, is, y'all is doing the, y'all is over there, okay? When is this bedroom getting clean? Because they over there doing things, okay? And y'all want to make sure y'all clean that room from top to bottom. Because they, they 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 look like they is getting it in. They sound like they getting it in, okay? And I'm not mad, but baby, clean this. Wait, is this Clint? Anyway, is this Clint? So, Aaron and Joanna, girl. Joanna get on my damn nerves, y'all. I ain't gonna hold you. Jo- Joanna and Sienna. Oh, girl, in a uh, girl unhinged girl. Just what is going, what is going on? Okay, Joanna's like, oh, well, you know, yeah, about us, how I feel about him in this position. Yeah. And Aaron, I, uh, you know what, Aaron? Okay. (laughs) Okay, Aaron, y'all, hang it up. Okay, hang it up, hang it up, hang it up. Aaron is not picking up on the cues. Joanna is not interested, and Aaron is just hanging on. And I don't understand why he is just hanging on. Anyway, I, I'm going to leave that alone. I have some theories about, about Aaron, but, you know, we're moving forward. So, Uncle Aaron. So, there's Aaron, and then there's Uncle Aaron. Shout out to Uncle Aaron. First of all, Uncle Aaron skin is together, okay? Uncle Aaron is 51 years old. That man don't look a day over 32. I promise you. Now, when you see his body, you do got a little bit of a daddy body, okay? And I love the way he was pouring into Alexis earlier that morning before she left baby he was getting her together like girl you need to remember that nigga put his hands on you okay and don't you go back to that nigga ever again now he ain't say all that but i put my own spin on it but basically that was my interpretation okay he 51 but girl he looking 32 girl skin is together girl skin is together i love it i love it he is with um uncle aaron is with who is uncle aaron diamond okay him and diamond 
they had a little couple hiccups, okay? That was from, see, from the episode one, had a couple hiccups. I guess he had proposed to somebody else, and it was some foolishness, but I guess they're back on track, okay? So they are in their position, and Uncle Aaron is loving it. He like, I'm here, you know, I'm on top. She at the bottom, I'm in control, but she in control too. I said, I know that's right, because see, Uncle Aaron got a little bit of wisdom. Just a little bit. Not a whole lot, but he got a little bit, okay? They freaky. I'm not mad. Keep it moving. All right, so Sienna and Brandon. Ooh, girl. Brandon lay flat on the floor because Sienna was like, let's do this one. And he automatically just got on the floor. Okay. But something tells me that Brandon, one of them type of men, he like, you know what? Let me be quiet. Let me hush. Let me let me see how this go. Let me see how this go. Cause I don't want to assume. But Brandon get on the floor. As soon as Sienna tell him, he lay down on the floor. Sienna sit on top of him. They asked how you feel. Sienna was kind of like beating around the bush a little bit. She was like, you know, it's, you know, I didn't want to have to do a whole lot of work. That's why I chose this position. And Toronto was like, well, girl, you don't, you're not seeing in his eyes. How do you feel? She was like, it's okay. I'm, are you feeling any sexual, uh, uh, anything? She was like, sort of, kind of, you know, I'm like, girl, that was, you just sat on him like he was a toilet. But anyway, then, um, I know, cause let, let me, t- well, I don't, I won't share all, all my business, but I sit on my boyfriend like that regularly. I just be sitting on him. Should I just see, he'll lay down or he'll be sitting in the chair and I just sit on top of him. He, he just sit there and we watch TV or whatever he was doing. You know, if he's on a computer or playing a game, child, he don't care. I just sit on him, but that's not really a, the way she plopped on him is how I plop on him when I'm, you know, just chilling kind of thing. Anyway, Brandon say he watching TV girl. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's 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 joanna and nephew aaron and sienna and and brandon them they mm-mm. <laughs> y'all they're uh, who i question how far they gonna be able to go all right so later on we see sienna and brandon have a conversation sienna is not okay all right she is oh lord one of those women that that men talk about yeah. Mm. Okay. So they're playing pool. Sienna and Brandon are playing pool. They're talking about moving. Sienna's in New York. Brandon is in Florida. And Brandon got two kids. Now, mind you, he has two kids from two different women, but he got married young. So he had a 13 year old. And 10 years later, he had a three year old. I don't think that's crazy because Brandon is like 35. Okay. He's 35 years old. So that's, you know what I mean? not a problem he got married young had a kid 10 years later had another kid like i just i don't feel like that's crazy sienna knows all of this going into the situation so as brandon is asking her about her moving to florida or how long she plans on staying in new york she is kind of like you know i don't know about that you need to move to new york now mind you this man got two kids okay and they're young well one is 13 but girl he still need his daddy okay so Brandon's like, she inconsistent. Like, she say one thing, then she say another. And she and he's absolutely right, because I heard her on the show say, I would be willing to move. She said it in the confessional. So now all of a sudden, she's not willing to move. So Brandon calls it out. He doesn't do it disrespectfully. He just says, I see inconsistencies. Sienna, her butt hurt. She's feeling like, I've heard you, I've heard other men say this before. I don't like that. So because she was in her feelings and butt hurt, she decides to lock and load. And tries to insult Brandon based off the things that she already knows about this man and uses against uses it against him. You got two kids, you've been married. How can you say, how can you say this about me when your life shows that you're inconsistent? You can't even be married. You can't stay married. I said, ma'am, not you insulting this man's past that you already knew existed just because your ass got your feelings got hurt because he told you you were inconsistent. Then you call him a bitch. I said, girl. Okay, girl, bye. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. when she said that i said oh no mama you got to go <laughs> you got to go how do you call somebody a bit he was not disrespectful to her at all not in the least bit he said i'm seeing inconsistencies and this is where i i want to talk about that she calls him a bitch and insults him based off of his past i said oh no brandon hang it up <laughs> hang it up brother hang it up my brother okay so uh we have they disperse all right and we see who is it is it um who is it greg and the other girl the girl he with i can't think of her name right now greg and what's the girl name hold on what's her name what's her name what's her name millie greg and millie they sitting down and they talking and they cute they're cute um 
and they're talking about when they decide when they decide that they're gonna have intimacy. Okay, and Millie is like, we gonna we gonna slow this thing down. We gonna slow it down, and I completely understand her because honestly, I felt like when they talked about the boom room boom 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 room being there, I was like, that's too soon. That's too early. Y'all don't need to be telling them people they just literally just met. No. Anyway, so they're talking about how soon it's gonna be. They talking their cash money. I'm not mad at it. We get together in a group again and. Sienna brings it up again with the group to discuss about Brandon. And everybody was looking at Sienna like, girl, what the hell wrong with you? Sienna was like, I just feel like if you take marriage seriously, then you would have still been in a marriage. Girl, first of all, he was young as hell. And I, I really appreciated Joanna saying, why do people feel like just because your marriage did not work doesn't mean that it's not the end of a journey and that you didn't learn from it? Why does it have to be failure? And I agree. Like, what are y'all talking about? There is no such thing that you will ever do in life that is failure. It's, it's the only time is failure is if you don't do anything at all, right? All of the, all the shots you don't take, that's failure. All of the opportunities that you don't walk through, that is failure. But if something doesn't work out or if it doesn't happen to go the, in the way that you want it to, that's not failure. That is just a journey so that you can learn and figure out how you can pivot. I, I just, you know, anyway, I personally think that, that Brandon need to walk away because Sienna has very unrealistic expectations. And the only reason why she's even bringing this up, she's doing this to embarrass Brandon. She is doing this because she is butt hurt. Because she knows that Brandon already has children. She's trying to humiliate him. She thought she was going to bring that bullshit to the group and everybody started taking Brandon's side. And so she's still sitting there looking crazy. Something wrong with her. She got a crazy look in her eye anyway. She look a little unhinged, baby. She look She look a little... Mm, mm. I ain't going to hold you. She she look crazy. She got a crazy look in her eye, child. She really do. I ain't going to hold you, okay? Anyway, y'all get down in the comments. I think I think on got another hit on their hands now. If they keep it real, okay, and don't play with us, don't be getting all these fake ass actors who want to be somebody who think they're gonna be somebody on TV. All right, get real people. I think this might be something. They might be all this might be a little something, something, child. Anyway, get down in the comments. Tell me what you think about the episode. Don't forget to like this video before you leave. Check out my merch. Your girl has merch. I'm in my graphic design bag okay and yeah get in the comments let me know what you think and we'll talk soon take care